When I graduated from high school uh, and went to the University of Kentucky in Lexington, uh, one of the first things I did after walking around the campus and then I walked downtown, I called my mother. Uh, we, mom uh, was in Harlan County where she was born in 1924. And I called my mom, I was, you know, astounded of the homogenous whiteness of Lexington, Kentucky. So I called mom, I said, I have never seen this many white people in one place in my life. And they keep telling me, there are no black people in Harlan County. I would not like to think that there had been some deliberate effort to paint Appalachia as a white place or space, that it just kind of uh, happened as a natural consequence of the origins, if you will, of Appalachia as a separate space. I think it was a man quite associated with Berea, uh, Mr. Frost, who came up with this idea that white Appalachians were somehow the living ancestors of somebody. And of course, they were all depicted as white, that kind of Scots-Irish uh, category. From the first days, Berea College itself, uh, the vast majority of the students early on were African-Americans from out here at Camp Nelson when they came as refugees literally from the, the war. When I was born there in the mid-40s, Harlan County, specifically the town in which I was born, Lynch, Kentucky, consisted of 38 different nationalities. Uh, and that was a function of how the United States Steel Corporation, which was the Amazon of the day, U.S. Steel, under the um, leadership of uh, J.P. Morgan and this Andrew Carnegie and these coal barons, these, these industrial barons, uh, they met Italians, they met Yugoslavian people, they met Czechs, all the people from Eastern Europe at Ellis Island. And they brought them directly through the Alleghenies into Western Pennsylvania, into Allegheny County, uh, where Pittsburgh was located, of course, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. All of those steel towns that were burgeoning in the early 1900s. And they took them on over the mountain, uh, down into southern West Virginia, in Keystone, and Gary, and Welch and Bluefield and Beckler. And of course there was Huntington, which was a railroad and river town. And then they came a little bit west and all of a sudden they were in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, people named Vicini and Popovich and Yablonski and Portelli and you name them. Uh, people from all over Eastern Europe and Italy and Spain. Uh, I grew up, for example, in Harlan County with a boy named Marcus Camacho. So I did not have to wait until I was grown to meet people who had Mexican, if you will, Hispanic background. And uh, then I ended up in Lexington, Kentucky in 1966, and all of a sudden I was saying, wow, there's only, uh, you know, this uh, Harlan County, Pike County, uh, Letcher County, Bell County, uh, Floyd County, Perry County, Eastern Kentucky, uh, had a higher percentage of black people than Fayette County, Lexington, Madison County, or even Jefferson County. So I grew up in a very cosmopolitan place and I heard all kinds of voices and I smelled all kinds of food and I saw this intermingling of people. Western Pennsylvania, Southwest Virginia, Southern West Virginia, East of Kentucky, uh, have not had the numbers and the concentrations of blacks as you saw in the Black Belt South, uh, but uh, they were there and uh, they're still here and I think they'll always be here.